Hello, Luis. How are you? Good evening, teacher. I am fine. Very hot. This day is very hot, teacher. Yes, it is. In this moment, I feel very hot. Ah. For me, this, this is an indication that tonight is going to rain. But uh, in the Channel 4, uh, Urbina say uh, there's no rain today, maybe on Saturday. <laughs> on Saturday? That yeah. is true. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> Wow. Maybe. And I am looking at the weather right now, and you're right. Tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow is 30% chance. But you're right. Tonight, no rain. Tonight is going to be a hot night. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have do you use fans in your house? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, only for me, the problem is that when I use fans at night, I feel mm -hmm. that in the morning, my throat hurts. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. You yes. too, Walter. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, but it's good. Doesn't matter. That's uh -huh. okay. It's like hot or throat. Eh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sometimes it happens to me. Um, I try to sleep, sit on my bed in order to feel that situation is so difficult to breathe <laughs> but yeah. it's necessary to use the fan in order to sleep very well exactly because yeah. sometimes it's just it's not enough mm -hmm. yeah uh, but imagine until saturday that's too much mm -hmm. yes okay mm -hmm. um how about you uh, sandra and nicole how are you are you feeling hot where you are Yes, it is very hot here. Good evening, teacher, by the way. <laughs> good evening, good evening. Yes. Well, I have worked too much today. Too much? No, I don't believe it. Yeah, of course I have. And um, uh, well, I have I have had a difficult with the with the midterm and um, I don't know why it's, it it is it, it appears that it is wrong what I am doing, but I have problems with the number one and the number nine. I don't know what happened with it because mm -hmm. I am I'm writing exactly what what we have uh, studied here. Okay, well, mm -hmm. don't worry. When we get to the midterm, we're going to be able to check. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, Let's take how how mm -hmm. many modules? Are for the top course only one or three or four? I don't know. Three. Ah, three. Three. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's the same idea. The same idea that uh, like the others, like um, uh, intermediate one, two, three, advanced yeah. one, two, three. So the top is the same idea. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's what happened. What happened? The same, nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. No more curses. No more cor Ah, yes, yes, there is. Uh, after the TOEFL, um, uh -huh. you can also have you have the option, a conversation course. I believe is the next options. Oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. So me too, teacher. Yes. So those are the, uh huh. Different <laughs> options, right? Not everybody wants to do the tofu, but maybe after you want to do the conversation. Oh, for a call center too. Maybe exactly, exactly. Yeah. Whatever you're yeah. interested in, exactly. Oh, aviation too. <laughs> aviation? No. Are do you, are you a pilot? No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> well, I, I, as I, I was working for, uh, Taka International Airlines. Ooh, a long, a long, long time ago. So I love aviation, you know. Uh, Sandra was the, the, the girl to speak in the, the airport. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh Maybe. Exactly. I was No, I wasn't. Um, I used to work in an aviation school. I used to teach English to the pilots. 
I like to, well, mm -hmm. I would like to, to be a teacher too, but mm -hmm. I don't know how how I will be this tough mm. of course, because um, to be honest, um, I feel that I am giving via. Uh, don't worry, <laughs> it's the first course. It's, <laughs> it's normal. It's for, it's uh, the uh, first uh, part uh, for expanding your vocabulary and expanding your ideas. <laughs> yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I know, but well, I, I have to encourage by myself, you know, because mm, it is it is not possible that I have I have reached until here and I stop. No, 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 no. I have to continue in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, well, let's continue then. Now that we're talking about it, let's take a look. Okay. okay. Great. So, as you can see, we already learned several different techniques for listening. Yesterday, we did the first two parts of the listening, one and two and three. And today, we're going to continue with the other sections of the listening. And we're going to practice with our partners. We're going to try. We're going to make sure we have several different listenings. The idea is for you to practice to see how you're developing and what you're trying to do. Remember, yeah. always, always read the question first. Be yes. clear what you are listening for. Not only because you hear the vocabulary, that is it. Make sure you understand the question and the possible answers. If you don't understand the question, it's very difficult for you to understand what is the correct answer. This is the first thing. Always make sure that it's clear the question so that then you can get the options when you hear it. Okay? Yes. Right? Because if I say on Monday at 7 o'clock, $5 uh, in Metro Centro, and I say, where are we going to meet? <gasps> if you if you read the question first, it's easy for you to, ah, Metro Centro, I know the location. If you heard, if you read the question and you say, what time? Ah, one o'clock. How much? Five. Ah, but if you have the question first. But if you don't, especially with the listenings that are long, it's hard. It's hard because you're not going to remember all the information. So that's the first thing. Try to listen and try to get uh, the question first to make sure that it's clear what you want to listen for. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, yeah. we are. Okay, perfect. So we're going to have groups of three. With our groups, we're going to complete the listening section. Remember, what was the listening section? This was listening practice test one. Listening practice test one. Jarvin, you're having some problems? Hey, hello, teacher. No, teacher. I already connected to class. But you are not in the group? No, right now, no. Okay, so we're okay. Let me send you the invitation again and we try again. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, it should be the um uh, teacher. What not? What exercise? What can I do? Is the listening practice the next, next one? The next listening. Next. Yes, it's the part. Siguiente. This one. No, 
We already, Hello, okay. we already completed all those. Siguiente. Uh-huh. The next yeah. one is just, what is the main? Nope. Is the next one. We are in the next one. The tail. Uh-huh. Go to the next one. There you go. The listening practice. Okay. This is where we are. Just we did it. Number one, two, three. Yeah, exactly. So now you can continue with your partners. Yes. Okay. 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 Um, the number Everything okay, Anna, Catherine, Vanessa? Ben, hi. The cost yes, actually. The I'm sorry. Let me pause we this. Can choose ah. whether to go ahead or not. Okay, so we're. I I guess we're all doing it separately. Uh huh. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah, yes. I'm listening, and I think they are too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm no listening problem. too. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Everything's good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Teacher. Uh -huh. the, 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 the word tricky. Mm -hmm. tricky. I know. <laughs> that, that's why uh, I, I suppose it's to verify how tricky is, it is to apply CBA to a, a transportation business. Um, okay. Jeff, if, if Jeff is, uh, I mean, if Jeff agrees, we can go with letter A. Okay. Letter to be a. honest, I have no idea. <laughs> Let's go with letter A. I am between Lear, right? We Lear are giving B. B. <laughs> okay. Oops, okay. let's continue. Sure. Let's continue with uh -huh. the... According to the professor, how does CBA evaluate subjective things? Um, how does okay. CBA evaluate things? By asking people what something is worth, by studying how people use money, by subtracting. Mm. Maybe you can listen again. Okay. Audio. This question is with this audio, right? Yes. I yes. guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. I suppose. When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. Why does the professor say this? Say on the building of a new road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By asking people what something is worth. Um, by studying how people use money. Constructing costs and benefits. By asking uh, experts for their opinions. Oh my god. Um, I haven't heard any anything of that words. I haven't heard <laughs> for example. <laughs> I mean we need to continue, I guess. I will go with letter D, I guess. My asking experts. <laughs> okay. Huh? Then, sure. Okay, with this audio. I don't know why, but it's no. 
Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Dr. Johnson. I came by to discuss my research paper. I dropped it by on Monday. Uh, about the nutritional value of chocolate? Oh, yes, Lisa, that's right. Have you had a chance to look at it yet? Yeah, I sure have. Uh, let me take it out of my files. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Well, Lisa, you've done a fine job of citing your sources and writing up your reference page. But you used a lot of internet resources for your information. That's right. Uh, you said we could, didn't you? Oh, yeah, but I also said to be sure to evaluate the site to make sure that it's worthwhile before you used it. This one here that I've circled, I don't think this is what I'd call a good source. But it has the university address of a professor. Isn't it okay to use sites with the .edu domain in the address? Well, you have to look beyond just the address. Yes. You are correct that this site is that of a professor, a professor at a very prestigious university, in fact. But did you notice this particular set of web pages were student papers that the professor had uploaded for the class to read and critique? You happen to have used one of the student papers. Well, that particular student may have done a fine job in his or her research, but a student is hardly an expert in the field. Oh, I hadn't realized that it was a student's work. I just noticed that it was on the website of a professor and thought, well, that it would be his work. Mm, you really need to investigate a bit deeper before you use online material. You could have checked the sources that the student had used. There might have been some useful papers by experts in that student's reference page. Okay. Now, the study here that you've cited looks very... Letter A. Yeah. The letter A. Yeah. Tricky yeah. is to Tricky. apply CBA. Yes, yes. You say in the beginning of the audio. Yes, yeah. this, is, this is the answer. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Next one. Number five, according to the professor, how does CBA evaluate subject things? So I guess it, it is in the, it's the same. same uh, it's the same audio? audio. Yeah. But the letter B. By studying how people use money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she didn't mention anything about opinions or, yeah, you know, people opinions. I don't know. I think it because she 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 tried to explain 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 how CBA used the money the money. Europe. Simple diet. The breakdown of non-carbohydrate foods like meats and fish doesn't form acidic byproducts, whereas carbohydrates are karyogenic. Uh, you know, caries, cavities, in other words, causing tooth decay. Carbohydrates, especially the sugars, are karyogenic. They produce acids that destroy teeth. Why does the professor say this? You know, caries, cavities. In other words, causing tooth decay. Um. Three. Think about how you prepare for your courses. You read the textbook, take notes during your lectures, you try to learn the concepts. Then you take a test, one that supposedly shows that you've gained that knowledge. Use sites with the .edu domain and the address? Well, you have to look beyond just the address. Yes, you are correct that this site is that of a professor, a professor at a very prestigious university, in fact. But did you notice this particular set of web pages were student papers that the professor had uploaded for the class to read and critique? You happen to have used one of the student papers. Well, that particular student may have done a fine job in his or her research, but a student is hardly an expert in the field. Oh, I hadn't realized that it was a student's work. I just noticed that it was on the website of a professor and thought, well, that it would be his work. Mm, you really need to investigate a bit deeper before you use online material. You could have checked the sources that the student had used. There might have been some useful papers by experts in that student's reference page. Okay. Now, the study here that you've cited looks very good. But 
Did you notice that the person who did the study works for a laboratory that's funded by a major chocolate company? Oh, so it's biased. Well, perhaps. At least it should be taken with a grain of salt. But it might also be very good research. So with data like that, data which may be biased, you should try to find an independent person who's run the same kind of experiment. Remember that a good experiment should be, well, you should be able to replicate it. So if a major chocolate company comes out with a study, we should have other people looking at that research with a critical but open mind. So it might be a good source. I don't have to throw it out. Right. But I think you should try to find more studies to back up the results. Okay. So has that been helpful? Yes. Oh, yeah, very, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. I really appreciate your help. <laughs> okay. Okay, so how do you feel? You ready? More or less? Okay. I know some of you feel like, oh my God, I didn't finish. We had to listen again. That is the problem because remember, you only listen in the exam. You only listen one time and you don't have more than 10 seconds to answer. That's it. One, two, three, 10 seconds maximum. And then the next question already appears. So if you don't know, many times, the hard part is making a educated decision. We're gonna take a look and make sure that everybody's okay and make sure that we have all of the ideas, okay, together. Let's try it. Here we go. Let me share my screen, okay. Okay, so this is where we should be off, right? Um, we talked about this yesterday, my apologies, the CBA, all of those. Okay, so then here is where you were with your partners. Let's try number four. What was your answer for number four? A. Okay, that's right. We, we mentioned it yesterday. And number five was? Uh, letter B. Letter B. Letter B. Good. What about number six? What did you think was number six? I think it's letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Okay. D. Okay. Number seven. We did it. This one, no. 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 We didn't. No. Okay. No problem. That's why we're here. We're here to practice. So let's take a look at the first ones to see how we're doing. And then we're going to take a moment. So here we have number four. Very good. Number five, we already know. Number six, excellent. Okay. And then that's it. Number seven, in this moment, we're going to go back. We're going to try to complete, listen to parts of the conversation and answer the question. Why does the professor say those? So listen again. We're going to take a few more minutes and we're going to make sure that everybody completes it. Okay. The idea is not to give you the answer. The idea is for you to try to understand what is the answer. And then we correct it to make sure we can understand why it's right or why it's wrong. Okay. The same groups or we change groups? Yeah. No, the same groups. The okay, same. let's try the same groups. All right, let me see if we can have it. Oh, we have some more people. All right, let's try maybe a little bit different this case. Okay, let's hear.
And there is the estado de pantalla. Yes. And then you have to click on share sound or something like that, it should say. Depending on the video, silencio. I can hear you, Jansi. Mm. Uh, uh, even though I think it's letter A because uh, 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 the teacher encouraged the student to investigate. Hmm. Right? Okay. That, I think it's letter A. No, another, another. Oh my God. Buildings. Much of the effort of the Prairie School was devoted to domestic buildings, mainly houses for well to do private citizens. So, can anyone here describe to me any of the important features of Prairie School houses? Didn't they mostly have long horizontal lines rather than a vertical appearance? Yes, yes, they did. That's certainly part of it. We can say that the most visible external features of this architecture were horizontal lines and heavy roofs projecting away from the walls. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs rather than on the prairies themselves. Okay, now what about the insides, the interiors? Didn't they want to do away with small rooms? Well, in a sense, yes. Um, there was certainly an emphasis on keeping the number of separate rooms to a minimum, um, opening up living space and uh, designing internal walls so that the light and view created a sense of unity. The idea was to reduce the number of interior corners typical of traditional European houses. See, prairie school architects thought of this, of this traditional home as confining, both physically and, and also spiritually. So by ridding 
the inside of houses of, of so many rooms and corners and walls, they hope to create a feeling of, of movement and freedom. Their ideal of beauty was to try to make the living space more compatible with human proportions and living requirements. Often, large fireplaces were built at the center of the overall design rather than attached to an outside wall. And this gave additional structural support to the building, so it further allowed the building to get by with fewer interior walls. Now, let me add that in line with their belief in the importance of nature, these architects related the interiors to the surrounding natural landscape by their use of windows that were continuous ribbons of glass. So in that way, the outside and inside of the houses were more closely related. Other ways they suggested the importance of nature were in designing terraces projecting from the external walls with parapets, walls that were used as as planting boxes for flowers and shrubs, and deep roof overhangs that led the eye toward the horizon. Of course, not all prairie school houses had all these features, but certainly we can say that there was a general tendency among these architects to provide their designs with many of them. Okay, so now we've discussed overall structure. Now what about ornamentation? Uh didn't they reject almost all decorative elements? Well, not entirely, although it's true they like to keep things simple. Again, this was in line with their opposition to what they perceived as, as the fussiness of more traditional housing styles. We can say that ornamentation was only permitted if it, if it complemented, if it, if it blended in with the overall expression and feeling of the building. So... To this end, the prairie school architects tended to use simple, unmixed, natural materials, sometimes with geometric or oriental designs. For example, many of the prairie houses had a turned up roof edge, reminiscent of traditional Japanese houses. Okay, so finally, I'd like to mention that these architects usually designed all the furniture that went with each house. Each piece of furniture, whether built in or freestanding, was carefully crafted to fit in with the overall feeling of the house. Again, natural materials were preferred and restful horizontal lines were emphasized. Now. Okay. Mm, all right. For me, um, it is letter C. What do you think? Okay. Yes, I letter C. All right. <laughs> it was pretty pretty long, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> long, longer than the last one. Uh, okay, so what can we say about the nature of primary school architecture? So it's... Well, it's... Mm. Mm, Let's see. I think letter B and letter D could not be because it would be the same answer. Yeah. So it, it, the answer is between Not letter true. A and Z for me. But, mm -hmm. mm, maybe yeah, because it mentions um, the influence of different um, arts different art, yeah, kind of art. arts. Yes, I don't remember the parts about the skyscrapers in America. Did you listen to something like that? I don't remember. No, I haven't heard that. No, I'm not sure. So maybe it could be letter B. Letter B, definitely. Uh, with yes. letter B, so in this case would be letter C. And the answer would be letter C. Mm, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Let's choose that one. Although it's true they like to keep things simple. Again, this was in line with their opposition to what they perceived as, as the fussiness of more traditional housing styles. We can say that ornamentation was only permitted if it, if it complemented, if it, if it blended in with the overall expression and feeling of the building. So, 
To this end, the prairie school architects tended to use simple, unmixed, natural materials, sometimes with geometric or oriental designs. For example, many of the prairie houses had a turned-up roof edge, reminiscent of traditional Japanese houses. Okay, so finally, I'd like to mention that these architects usually designed all the furniture that went with each house. Each piece of furniture, whether built-in or freestanding, was carefully crafted to fit in with the overall feeling of the house. Again, natural materials were preferred and restful horizontal lines were emphasized. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, what is a lecture mm. mainly about? Mm. That's 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 uh huh because uh huh it, because it, it, it says that uh, she will focus on Friday School of Arch Architecture. Uh, well, at the beginning she says about. I guess letter C because it like letter B and D is like uh some uh, uh yeah uh, what it says characteristic or something like that that mm -hmm. yeah those those uh belongs to the other to the other reply that we have to choose it there are three more you know no, 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 two uh, more the, the, the prior, prior uh -huh. school of architecture i think letters in conclusion letters see, letters see, letters see, yeah. what what can be said about the nature of Brady school of architecture I'm not sure if, if if we have to take into account all the four um, responses about. The according response to those, them. yeah, according to those responses. Um, University address. Isn't it okay to use sites with the .edu domain in the address? Well, you have to look beyond just the address. Yes, you are correct that this site is that of a professor professor at a very prestigious university, in fact. But did you notice this particular set of web pages were student papers that the professor had uploaded for the class to read and critique? You happen to have used one of the student papers. Well, that particular student may have done a fine job in his or her research, but a student is hardly an expert in the field. Oh, I hadn't realized that it was a student's work. I just noticed that it was on the website of a professor and thought, well, that it would be his work. And you really need to investigate a bit deeper before you use online material. You could have checked the sources that the student had used. There might have been some useful papers by experts in that student's reference page. Okay. Now, the study here that you've cited looks very good. But did you notice that the person who did the study works for a laboratory... Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, let me close this one and open and this one. Let uh, this and let number eleven. Let eleven, yeah. Eleven. Mm -hmm. It says, listen again to listen. the part. Ah, it's the same lecture, okay. I guess. Uh huh. Then answer the question why does the professor say this? Okay, let's listen. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, 
Most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs, rather than on the prairies themselves. Why does the professor say this? Somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas. <laughs> to introduce a new discussion topic for the like now. Messages, the, name. That the name of the school is slightly inappropriate. Mm. 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 But, but what is school? The, the school, Brady? The Brady yeah. school? Yeah, that uh -huh. one. It is slightly inappropriate. Mm. Do you know disagreement is... I think it's letter D. To express disagreement with the stated aims of the private school architect. Mm. Mm. No. No, no, no. But to suggest that the name of the school is a slightly inappropriate. I don't know. It, it, she mentions urban areas. Mm -hmm. What? Well, Okay, let's do sing again. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I, I don't the shapes so. were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs, rather than on the prairies themselves. Why does the professor say this? Somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas. Urban areas. Uh -huh. That's mm -hmm. like a, it was supposed to be built in in a specific very area, but at the end it was built in urban areas. I think it's Larry to express that disagreement. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, she expressed disagreement, but also, um, I suppose it is the. It's slightly <laughs> inappropriate mm. uh -huh. because it because it is not a uh, located uh, in a in a in an excellent area. But I suppose the private private school is in a urban area. It, it, oh, oh. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, let's go yes. on with the next one. <laughs> okay, it says uh number twelve. With uh -huh. aspect of a mimis behavior. Of a mimis behavior. Does the professor mainly discuss? Ah, this is another one. And letter A, it's yeah. the genetic structure. A, B, its ability to disappear. Its physical appearance. Its tendency to be copied. That's the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's listen. Let's read the other one. <laughs> ah, there is another one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, okay. There's another one. You say the first skyscraper is in America. A and C. Okay, letter B. B, yes. School. She mentioned that. Yes. According to the professor, how did the practice the private school, the private are, school. may live in a place more compatible with the human need? Mm -hmm.
Letter A and B, the first screen. Yes. For me, the, the letter C. Let her see. Yeah. Yes, she mentioned she mentioned in the audio. Yes. Yeah, the prior school of architect and the audio multi. Yes. Yes. Let her see. Because right. he was comparing about Jean and me like a copy. Okay. And then, according to the professor, why did the an 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 Anastasia? I don't know how to pronounce it. Start <laughs> making pottery. Ah. Uh, mm. I'm not sure. Um, either. Mm -mm. Mm. Eh. <laughs> Maybe letter A, they wanted to trade with other cultures. Yeah, it could be. Because they didn't mention food or artistic skill. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so it was the last one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and check at this moment. I know that some groups did not finish and other groups did finish. So we're going to check because already we have some groups that yes, completed it and finished it. Don't worry if you didn't finish, we're going to practice and try to get an idea. Okay. So we understood that number four and five, the answers. What about number six? What did you think was number six? Letter D. Letter, Letter D. Okay, so we have B and D. Okay, good. The correct one is D. Letter D. To indicate that she needs to pay attention to the other details. Mm -hmm. What about here? Number, oops, number seven we already saw uh, is letter A. Mm -hmm. They mentioned it? Uh-huh. A, to encourage the student to investigate the claims further. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're talking about, oh, did you notice? Ah, that means, did you pay attention to? Who is it? The person that is running the chocolate, right? That's part of the finance. What about number eight, the gist? What is the lecture mainly about? Let us see. The Friday school. Let us see. Good. The Prairie School of Architecture. Great. Now, what can be said about the Prairie School of Architecture? Because letter the B. focus. Letter B. Okay. A. Yeah. B. B. Oh. A C. Good. Good. And according to the professor, how did the Prairie School Architects make living space more compatible with human needs? Letter C, teacher. Letter C. Okay, good. I see many people agree. Letter C. Very nice. Okay. Getting okay. better. Then we have listen to the part of the lecture 
And why does the professor say that? Letter B. Letter B. B. Okay, good. We got many groups that finished there. Correct. To suggest that the name of the school is slightly inappropriate. Yeah, I knew. I knew. Yes, 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 Sandra. Yeah. Letter B. Ah, okay. Letter, letter B. 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 Letter B, yes, good. Number 12, what aspect of the uh, MEMS behavior does the professor mainly discuss? Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Good. It's sending its tendency to be copied. Right. And the last one, why did the uh, Anasi start making pottery? C. Letter C. Letter C. C. Correct. It's better for keeping food. All they wanted to was to keep food. Excellent. All right. Pretty good all in all. A little, a, a lot of information, a lot of different techniques. Don't worry, we're gonna keep practicing. We're gonna keep trying it. Um, it should be fixed. The We skipped over a couple of exercises. We're gonna go back because uh, they had a couple of problems with the platform, but it should be fixed. Before we go back and practice a few specific exercises, are there any questions? Anything that is not clear in this part? All the explanations are clear, teacher. But sometimes we we en enroll our our mind, you know. <laughs> yes, probably one of the most difficult part is doubting yourself. Many times you start to analyze and you overanalyze. I know. I listen to this. I listen to this. I know. And and then tch, uh -huh. you have so many answers that you think are correct, and the first one, I. The, and that was the correct answer and you doubted yourself or you didn't believe it. So okay. it's very important to continue. We're gonna continue practicing. We're gonna continue doing those different things. Um, Right now, we're gonna talk with our partners. Uh, we have a few minutes left and it's not worth beginning the next topic, but uh, Julio, yes, Julio, you have a, a question. Um, yes, uh, the problem with Aureo is the Aureo had some tricky. Uh, because you hear uh, the the word you can see in the in the answers, uh, you say ah that is the answer because she mentioned, but just mentioned to make a mistake. Exactly, that is the trick, only to trick you. the The idea is they mention the audios only to give you the vocabulary, so that way when you look, you say ah, I heard this vocabulary but not that that was the correct answer. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna practice. We're gonna practice a couple more. Um, right now, we're gonna discuss with our partners, what are your plans? We're gonna take a moment, really thinking about it. What do you want to do with the TOEFL? Do you want to study in another country? Do you want to work in another country? Only you are taking the class to improve your vocabulary and listening. So we're gonna take a few moments with our partners and just speaking. Why are you taking the TOEFL class and how do you imagine yourself in one year after the course? What is it going to use for? Okay? Okay. Great. Okay, okay, great. Perfect.
Yeah. Um, anyway, a uh, particular classes, maybe it could be good. I could be, yeah. That's a good um, idea. Or maybe it doesn't matter my age. Um, maybe I could work in a call center or something like that, you know? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you can apply and... Mm -hmm. well. Uh huh. Another idea could be um to be to make translations, uh, from English into Spanish, or, mm -hmm. or on the contrary, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I would like to be an interpreter too, but uh, that is a very special study I have to to take. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's more formal and the vocabulary is different, right? Uh huh, and the technique, the techniques are very difficult, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I suppose that, um, <laughs> you know, when I when I finish, I I was studying English before, um, so many years ago, at about 20, 20 years ago, in Oka, mm -hmm. and and when I finished the course there, um. I began studying German, and when people asked me to study, why I wanted to study German. For two months, dollar, remember? $60 per month. $60 per month? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And for how long time, or how long time is the course? Um, Six months. Six months. Yeah. Year. It's good. Mm, I had a friend that he was studying um at the American English mm -hmm. Let me see. Academy. No. No, no uh, American school. Oh. Escuela Americana. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He was studying, but he got a scholarship from ITCA and from American school. And he graduated from English, and he uh he did a test, the toy test. Oh really? But he didn't pay anything. It was amazing. Oh. Yeah, he was studying uh two years. Oh. Yes, he learned a lot vocabulary, uh, grammar, comprehension, um. But, he but, learned a lot. but when when received the, the, the TOEFL course, I identify I'm so lazy. Really. Come on, teacher, cut my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's time to cut the inspiration. Uh, we're going to pause right there. But tomorrow, we're going to continue. And tomorrow, we're going to practice specific listening. In the test, we can we could identify what areas gave us difficulty, right? We practice, we listen, and we had. Tomorrow, we're going to practice listening for main ideas, specific. We're going to practice listening for uh, specific information, detailed questions. We're going to have uh, different forms so that we can try to work on the areas so that when we do the test again, we can improve and have better techniques. Okay? Okay. Okay, Thank okay you. teacher. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow.